Take it away. Cool. So I'm probably just going to, I'm going to go through the presentation, but I'm going to explain why I do some of the things I do and I think how it affects the customer in the presentation, makes them feel more comfortable. There's some psychology behind that. Some people may find that interesting. Some may think I'm ridiculous. Either way, first question I ask right here is I say, hey, Mr. Suter, you took this meeting. You're kind enough to take a cold call from Lexus. Obviously, this is important. Can you help me understand where you're coming from? I ask that question because I want to know what they are worried about right there. And they will tell you. And you will, you will automatically set the tone that you are interested in solving their problem. And you're, it, it's not a, hey, I'm worried about you. It's, can you help me understand where you're coming from? That is a very open, you're, you're wanting to understand their hearts and feelings and that ultimately, I don't care who you are, selling is a feeling, it is a relationship. I don't care how great your product is, if you do not own that relationship right from the get-go, you will not get the deal and I'll swear it to my grave. <clears throat> second half, second thing I'll say too, and this might make some people uncomfortable, is I will say, Okay, thank you for explaining that to me. Sounds like ransomware is really important to you. Um, the way we do this is a little bit different. We look at it as behavior. If it's okay with you and respect of your time, is it all right if I skip some of the more salesy slides and get kind of into the weeds on this thing? The reason I say that is I want them to sh know that I value their time. I'm gonna skip some of the more marketing stuff because I value your time more than mine. I want to understand what the problem is and I want you to see how this thing runs in the real world. I want to get to that demo as quick as possible. So I'll let them know that. And oftentimes that gets a really positive response. Every techie hates the presentation. So I want to show that I understand that. This slide right here goes through the history of Robert um, and basically why he started this company. The, the thing I will talk about most is Robert, our CEO, founder. He was an ex-country manager over in Europe for NetApp. One thing he noticed as he was out there selling all these boxes is there are some gaps in that, particularly on the ransomware side. How do we leverage those snapshots more effectively? And he developed a software team to come around here and address some of these gaps. We've been around for nine plus years. This is the old deck. Uh, we have 600 customers. And another cool thing we like to point out is half of our resources are in R&D. Nerds love that. Then I'll go from there. Is that, that still true today? Robert? Yeah. I don't ask, I know there's been a lot of changes in the six months or however long I've been here. I didn't know if that was still an accurate statement. Thank you. We hire lots of people here, but also in the tech community. Yeah. Hop, hop, hop is good. Yeah, real good. So this slide has changed obviously a little bit. Right now we're primarily focusing on crypto spike, but one thing I'll point out too is all these solutions were centered around NetApp. We want to hammer home how involved we are in NetApp because if we're talking to the NetApp storage admin, we want them to know we're talking the same language here. When we're talking app policy, when we're talking snapshots, when we're talking ONTAP, I want them to know that our software is built around all of those things. And that makes them more comfortable. Typically, they're gonna express interest in, oh, tell me a little more about this restore manager. How do I do single, or how do I restore? How do I uh, index my snapshots? Really cool people. You get the point. This slide we like to point on, <clears throat> insider threats. This is where we discuss insider threats. Why, why is that important? Ransomware, obviously we all know Russia is bad and China is bad, they're coming after our data, but what we saw an increase of during COVID is you're sending people home with laptops, that computer might become the family computer, right? Not so great, maybe child thinks this cool looking ad is fun, starts click, next thing you know, you're compromised. We noticed that, we saw an increase in insider threats either from maliciousness, some of that being people laid off, maybe their reaction to being laid off was, hey, I'm gonna manipulate a bunch of data. The other half was what I discussed earlier. Sometimes the kids, family computer becomes a compromised estate. Where the reason I bring that up is because CryptoSpike addresses those issues. <clears throat> I'll usually skip this slide and this slide. Those are the two slides I'll skip to fulfill my promise of I'm gonna skip the marketing slides with them. Now we get to the nuts and bolts of this thing. Our, our software is consistent of three pillars, a block list, a pass list, and an analyzer. Now I'm, I'm, I'm out of presentation mode. I'm gonna go through some philosophy here. When, when you give a presentation, you are supposed to supply the meat and this is the bones. 
So I, 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 I don't read off the slide. I don't come in here and go, blocks, no ransomware extensions, update, um, I don't read that off to the customer. The knowledge is up here in the head. That's just supposed to give me a path to go along. So I'm, I'm talking through a story. I'll say, hey, I'm working with a really large oil and gas company. They, they, they built their own F policy. That's what we use. And they tried to create their own block list. What the exit block list? These are known ransomware file extensions. Think your dot seven sevens, your dot lock keys. <coughs> Oxy, in this case, tried to build their own block list. They got up to about a hundred, took a lot of work. As of now, our list is sitting at almost 5,000 ransomware file extensions. And we do that automatically for you. So say an attack took place in Europe, we catch that with our analyzer, we're gonna automatically update this block list for you. Pretty neat. Second half is a PaaS list. We're getting rid of that, so we won't talk about it. The other half, is, or the last part, is the analyzer. <clears throat> what is this analyzer? This is essentially our secret sauce. This is how we stop zero-day attacks. They love that buzzword, because everyone's worried about, oh, how do we stop something? This is how we do it. We, we, we view ransomware as a behavior. There are people out there that think of ransomware as, oh, you have to go through all these files and open these files and look for data inside of it. No, we're looking for Mr. User to begin to do harmful <coughs> things in your environment as a behavior. And that's how we catch it. <coughs> what is that consistent of? It's just, it's, just a few, it's just a few patterns, which we'll get to in here in a minute, but do we have any questions? That's where I'll pause and I'll ask, do you have any questions? Sort of a temperature check. Typically, there are some questions. Okay, great, understand, feels like, sounds like, smells like, you know, I get what you're going through. You, you guys all know that. Get on to the next part. So this is where I'll also tell another story. Can I, sorry, can I ask a question? Yeah. If they stop it, if you stop there and they ask questions and they start going technical with stuff that you know you're gonna be showing them in the demo, mm -hmm. do you address high level or do you like, are you like, great question, we're actually gonna show you the, the, the GUI shortly, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, because you don't want to blow them off, but it's also like, you. I find that when questions are asked around that time, I'm thinking in my head, man, I'm about to show you, but I don't want to dismiss what you're saying. So one phrase I like to use is like, hey, I don't want to burn the popcorn here, but we're going to get to that in the demo. Uh, if it's okay with you, would you be opposed to me addressing that when we get to the demo? And you know, don't burn the fire. Everyone's yeah. done that before they get it. They, you don't want to overcook this thing because if they're showing interest, you want to keep them interested. The whole yeah. goal here is how do I drive curiosity? I'm not here to push this thing down your throat. I want you to be curious. I want you to understand what it does and get more curious so that whenever Matt, Chris, now Kent starts to talk about it, that's when you can hammer them. So I'll, I would say, Maddie, you know, it's a great question. Yeah, we get, we get so many people are always curious about our block list. Where do you get these things? You know, how are you doing this? I don't want to burn popcorn here. Uh, we will show you our block list later, okay. and I'll show you every extension you want to see, ranging from Snoop Dogg to Chernobyl. We got them all. <laughs> okay, so thank you. Yeah. So then, once we get to this last slide, this is where I tell an actual story. I'll use, uh, you know, I say, say you're Mr. Storage Admin, you're going off to Thanksgiving. Typically, we see a lot of attacks take place during holidays because, you know, bad actors understand that people are away from their desk might not be able to catch the thing. <clears throat> if you have CryptoSpike deployed on your NetApps, constantly looking for these bad behaviors, you don't have to worry about it. So say you're sitting at home, you get an alert, CryptoSpike has jumped into action, what has it done? It has taken a user that was deemed harmful in your environment and has put them in a bubble. Why is that important? Because <clears throat> typically whenever you deal with ransomware, there could there's potential for network shutdown, really big problem. In this case, only one user has been put in a bubble and the rest of your network is up and running. From there, you'd be able to go through and do single file restores and we leverage your snapshots to do that. Why is that important? Because you lose no good data. So in a typical ransomware recovery plan, you have to pick, almost choose the lesser evil from which point you restore. So if your snapshot schedule is what, every two hours or something, there might be a window, a two hour window, where there's some really good important data that your company found, but because your attack prior to that, you have to restore it back to it, you're gonna lose that window. That's, that's sometimes make it or break it for companies. We give you the ability to not worry about that situation. From there, after you've done your single file restores, you've made sure everything is okay, gone through your checks and balances, security gave the thumbs up, 
you can release Mr. User back into the wild. <clears throat> Why is that so great? There was no network downtime. You took care of the problem. No good data was lost. And you were able to take care of it with just a few clicks of the button, which you'll see here in a minute. Do it, are there any questions here? Did I explain that okay? That's the other thing I like to ask <coughs> to get philosophical again. I don't like to ask, does that make sense? Because that means the onus is on them to understand it. If you ask, did I explain that okay? It's on me to make sure I explained our product effectively. That's a big difference. David, much like me, you do have a way with words. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just don't want to laugh at everything I say. You're it's like, <laughs> no, you do a really good job. Your words, not mine, about psychological or whatever, about making the customers feel good and checking in on them but not making it so obvious that you're checking in on them. It's a subtle way to checking them on. You do lead them, and you broke it with um, warm fuzzies during your presentations. You do do a great job of getting those gut checks without having a hard stop in doing it. Oh, that sucks. Well, thank you, Matt. That goes a long way. Um, <laughs> IT help. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I mean, y'all get the point. It, it, it makes a big difference. Like. Mm -hmm. Your significant others mad at you, be like, why are you mad at me? No, you're gonna ask what I do wrong. It's my it's my fault, obviously. You're mad at me. <laughs> you're gonna own it. And you do that with the customer too. You're a good husband. <laughs> Does that make sense? Did I explain that over? Totally. <laughs> 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 A big ask, and I know it's extra work for you, but could you write your I don't want to say one-liners, but your check stops down for us. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. I don't know if check stops is the right word. No, it is. It's, uh, check it. it's temperature checks. Just just record one of your sessions, and maybe you can write it down. We're doing it now. If, if you would like to benefit from it, you know. So it's just, you know, press the record button, uh, record button. That's yeah. It. But in my opinion, this is how you build a trusted advisor, right? You're interested in how they're feeling, you wanna make sure I'm doing my job, because you, you jumped on my meeting, it's my problem to make sure you understand how this thing works, not your problem to understand how it works, and if you show that, it goes a long way. From here, you know, this is where I hand it off to Chris or Matt, say, hey, you know, thank you for your questions, I understand that. Uh, some of these things will be covered in the demo, it might make sense to cover them now. You know, Matt or Chris, can you walk through? Yeah. And the previous two slides are ultimately important because really what you're doing is you're setting up that demo. Now they're looking for stuff in the demo. Now they're noticing what they need to notice. And that's when you get those light bulb moments from the customer of, oh yeah, that's what I need. Right. Um, other than that, that's really it. Uh, we're getting rid of, we got rid of this slide. Uh, uh, yeah, this slide was kind of a beat down. It was good to explain why you do that. Uh, you get rid of it or? No, no, kind of explain <laughs> why we have those requirements there, why they were they used to be talking yeah, about. Yeah, when we did have this slide, the reason it would be there is to show how likely this thing is. Yeah. It does, it's, I wouldn't get directly into competitors there, but I would say it kind of in a cheeky way, it'd be like some of our, some of the people we go up against, the, their, their software is very heavy. They're doing full file scans, which can be taxing on latency on your NetApps. You bought a Ferrari, probably want it to be fast, we're a lightweight tool. We're just leveraging a nice little API call called F policy, a couple of OVA servers deployed. We can get this thing up and running within maybe under two hours if Matt isn't too grumpy that day. And then you're better protected automatically. It's a full-fledged product and we, we I, I might bring up POC here, depends. Uh, and this is a know your audience slide. I mean, if you've got a group of really techy guys, the guys who are gonna be doing the install, I mean, then they're gonna wanna know this stuff. If you're still in the high level people, they don't care about this. Right. Um, and that's it. So, did I, is that good for everyone? Enjoy it. Who goes to the PO2? Right. Yeah, thank you. Um, Great pace. And if you're ever presenting, stand on the left side because then they're looking left or right. <laughs> that's another cool trick. Yoda. Yoda. <laughs> <laughs>